And it's their intrinsic nature that these strings actually vibrate. But what else can we look to to find frequency and vibration? And that is sound. Now, most of you have seen this video before. It is the frequency of the sound that is causing the vibration and making the sound change into different patterns. So now we're going to come back to this in part two of the Saturn video because it's very important. So now if our consciousness can actually affect the waveform of an electron, what else can it affect? So now if you've seen my previous video on human energy, I was speaking about the human heart. Now our heart is the energetic organ and it actually measures stronger than our brain. So now our heart puts out an electromagnetic field that encompasses our entire body 360 degrees. It can be detected as far as 3 to 12 feet away. So now we have an energetic organ. Our heart is an electric organ, which is why doctors can use a defibrillator to shock us back to life. So we have an energetic organ that is our heart, one that is our brain, and we have energy coursing through every cell in our body. So now, just like in the previous video on energy, I spoke about Dragon Ball Z. So now anybody who watches Dragon Ball Z, they know they speak about raising their power levels. And believe it or not, we have power levels as well. The average human actually measures between 30 and 100 millivolts. Now that's less than one full volt. Now, some people can actually get up to 2,000 millivolts, which is actually two full volts. So now to put that in perspective, a television requires 25,000 volts of electricity to be power. So that seems like we have a you know, pretty small amount of you know, power for us to sustain our life for you know, decades. So now in theory, if we raise our energy level, if we raise our consciousness, we should be able to affect reality in other ways than simply changing a wave into a particle. So what is stopping us? What is keeping us from doing that? Now, the weird thing is our heart is the strongest organ in our body. And the number one killer of human beings around the world is heart disease. So now if your heart goes out, that's it. You die. Now, in Dragon Ball Z, what killed the strongest fighter in the universe, Goku? He died from heart disease. If you watch the Android saga, Goku dies from heart disease. It wasn't until Trunks went back in time to give him the cure that he actually survived. So now, Akira Toriyama is actually trying to tell you a lot of things in Dragon Ball Z. If you don't watch it, I suggest you watch it, especially if you're into quantum physics. Now, anybody who studies physics know about 1927 the fifth Solvay conference in Brussels, Belgium, where physicists like Einstein and Niels Bohr and Heisenberg and all of the leading physicists of that time met to discuss electrons and protons. Now in this conference, they spoke about quantum physics. They talked about how their experiments cannot be completed when there was a conscious observer in the room. So now most people look to this time as being the rise of quantum physics. Now, when we look at the atom, when we talk about matter and the electrons and energy, and when we study the atom, we're basically talking about, you know, energy being trapped within matter. So where else can we look to find this story that predates this time? So now we know that people were talking about and or getting into quantum physics, you know, since the 1800s. But we can go back even further. So now when we look at the Nag Hammadi manuscripts, so the Nag Hammadi manuscripts are of Gnostic text. The Nag Hammadi manuscripts were found in 1945 in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. And they talk about Gnosticism. They talk about, you know, us being energetic beings trapped in flesh, trapped in matter. And this is what the Gnostic faith is about. It's about matter being evil and us being energy that needs to escape. So now we can go all the way back and look at these Nakamadi manuscripts. They were found two years before the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they talk about us being energetic beings. Now these Nakamadi manuscripts, they date back to 120 to 400 AD. But we can also go as far back as the 6th century BCE and look at the Greek philosopher Thales, who studied in Egypt. And he talked about the atom. Now, the word atom actually comes from the Greek word atomos. So here we have, during ancient times, people talking about the atom, people speaking about energy, talking about the power of electrons. Now, what happened was these physicists, 
in the 1900s who talked about quantum physics, what they did was take the knowledge of the atom to the next level. So at this meeting in Brussels, Belgium, when they discovered how consciousness could affect, you know, our physical reality, this must have, you know, scared the powers that be because a lot of things changed since the early 1900s. You know, we got radio and we got TV and we got TV programming and it was a whole war since then that has been geared at destroying our consciousness. Now, these scientists have basically figured out how powerful our consciousness really is. And it seems like since then, the powers that be, they do not want us tapping into that power. In fact, a man named Graham Hancock speaks on it. Take a look. And in the interim, you made a comment at the end of your talk today about it, it was, we need to take our consciousness back into our own hands. I, I do feel very, very strongly that we do. It's um, been co-opted by the media and by everything well, else. Well, yes. For, for, first of all, on, on the input side, uh, Western, Western civilization has, has taken control of the consciousness of, of billions of people through the medium of television, uh, projecting the ethic of Western culture, uh, the consumerist, materialist ethic, uh, is beamed at us 24 hours a day on our, on our TV channels. And secondly, on the other side, Western culture has criminalized and demonized uh, all experiences involving altered states of consciousness and any substances that put us into an altered state of consciousness. And this is clearly a war over consciousness that's going on. It's clear that our societies have an investment in preventing us from exploring where altered states of consciousness will lead us. Perhaps there's a deep fear that if we do explore those altered states of consciousness, we will not accept the power structures and the uh, fairy tale illusion uh, of material wealth that that we're all brought up to pursue as though that's the only thing to existence. Suppose that the that the ancient Egyptians and, and other cultures like that were right. Suppose they were right, that it's really vital, absolutely vital for us and for our eternal destiny what we do in this life. And then consider the predicament of billions of highly intelligent people who are lulled into a state of sleep by this consciousness bomb of television which is constantly being beamed at them and who are not allowed to explore the mysteries of their own consciousness using the techniques of shamans that shamans have developed for thousands of years using the plant hallucinogens. We are simply not allowed to do that and if we do that then we are considered to be criminals and we are stigmatized by our society and we are put in prison. This is a reversion to the world of the Spanish Inquisition. If I as an individual I'm not sovereign over my own consciousness. If I cannot decide what to do with my consciousness, which is the heart of my being, then I am not free. And I need not talk about freedom or living in a free society or such issues as democracy if my society will not allow me to explore my own consciousness. And that is the problem that we live in today, that our societies hate the idea of exploring altered states of consciousness and use every power structure that they have uh, to prevent that from, from happening. If in an altered state of consciousness, my behavior is disruptive in the public arena, then that behavior should rightly be controlled by society. But a personal and private exploration of our own consciousness is our own business, in my view, and is not the business of the state. So since the 1800s, we've gotten radio. We've gotten radio shows. We've gotten TV and TV shows, TV programming. We've gotten Hollywood and a whole music industry, a whole movie industry. We've gotten the entertainment and sports industry. We've gotten all these things to keep us distracted, to keep our consciousness from growing. Now, the government has created the public school system and taken control of how we educate ourselves and our children. Now, they've done all this and continue to do all of this to what? To keep us from the tree of life. And that is, of course, why I wanted to get into quantum physics and tell you guys just this basic level of quantum physics to make you understand how important quantum physics is because it is one of the roads that leads to the tree of life. Now, you can grow up and you can be a genius and you can study for decades and you might come close to to discovering a major piece of the puzzle like, you know, Einstein and these physicists have done. But that is highly unlikely today since so much information is controlled. It's so much that we don't know. And it's a lot that we don't know about the universe. Now, take for example, everything we've talked about in this video so far has to do with the atom. 
So we talked about electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks. We've talked, we've talked about string theory. Now, all of this has to do with the atom. Now, the thing is, when we look out at the physical universe, everything that we can see, I'm talking about all of the physical things like the planets, the suns, the moons, all of the meteors, all of the galaxies, all these things that we can see only make up 5% of the known universe. 5%. Just think about that. Now, 25% of the universe is what is known as dark matter. The other 70% is what is known as dark energy. And physicists, they really have no clue on what this stuff is made of. So now think about all of the movies and TV shows that's talking about quantum physics. And a lot of people don't even realize it. You know, TV shows like Sliders and Quantum Leap. Now, believe it or not, quantum leap is something that actually occurs with electrons. It's called atomic electron transition. And it's when the electron changes from one state, from one quantum state to the next within an atom. So now what happens is the electron jumps from one power level to the next and it skips everything in between. So now you got a bunch of TV shows and movies, you know, we got Star Trek and we got uh, Star Wars, of course, and we got um, shows like Sliders and Quantum Leap and Stargate SG-1 and uh, Atlantis and anything that's talking about, you know, portal jumping and time traveling or anything like that is talking about quantum physics. Now, you couldn't watch TV, you couldn't use your smartphone or get on the computer without quantum mechanics. You know, quantum physics deals with all of these things. We wouldn't have TV. We wouldn't have flat screens. We wouldn't have our, you know, smart watch phones and all of these things without quantum mechanics, without quantum physics. So it's something that is very important that we understand and that we know and we understand how it works. So now we know that there is a such thing as dimensions. It's not just something that somebody's seen in a TV show or in a movie, something that we just talk about for fun. This is something that has really been studied and is being, you know, put out there as truth. So we have to look at these things and realize that these people are talking about dimensions, they're talking about energy, they're talking about a whole vast universe of things that we have absolutely no clue about. And on top of that, that our consciousness can somehow affect these things. That is a major thing that we are just not exploring because something or somebody don't want us to. And that's what we're going to get into a lot more in part two of, you know, Saturn and Satan video. Now, there's a lot of things I left out of this video because I didn't want it to be too long. I didn't want to bombard it with too much information. I just wanted to get straight to the point. And like I said, this is not going to be a normal quantum mechanics or quantum physics video, but it's just something that I wanted you to get in your head and get you to, to go jump online or jump into books and just study more of because when you start getting into quantum physics and it's a lot more to it, it's a lot more to these dimensions, there's a lot more things that you should study on your own and understand. Now, thanks for watching. You know, I'm glad to be back in Philly, back in America. You know, I came here and, you know, it's been good so far. I have a lot more videos to put out. I'm going to be attending school shortly, so I want to get as much videos out as possible. And unfortunately, sometime in the next couple of months, I'm going to have to get my jaw wired shut, my mouth wired shut. And a lot of you may have picked up on it. I have a slight speech impediment. <laughs> And it's hard for me to pronounce words due to an unfortunate accident that I have with my jaw. And I have to get my mouth wired shut, so I'm not going to be speaking for probably about a month, maybe two. Now, that's going to make some people really happy, but I'm going to prepare a lot of videos before that time and get them out there. But this won't be till sometime next year. I think my book will be out by then. And um, I'll put out enough videos to last through that time. So I want to thank everybody for watching. I have more videos to come, and I'll see you guys next video.